scattered like emeralds on a turquoise sea. The 32 glorious islands that make up St. Vincent and the Grenadines lie in splendor in the southeastern Caribbean Sea. These sparsely developed islands offer unrivaled natural beauty, unblemished beaches, thick rainforests, lush mountains, shimmering waterfalls, valleys fertile with volcanic soil, brilliantly colored wildlife, both on land and in the sea. These remote islands present the ultimate opportunity for outdoor adventure in the Caribbean. World-class sailing and yacht chartering, superb diving and snorkeling, swimming near isolated waterfalls, hiking to the crater of a rugged volcano, romping on white sand beaches, a place where nature remains pure and unspoiled. Welcome to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, one step closer to Eden. Located in the southeastern Caribbean Sea, St. Vincent and the Grenadines lie between St. Lucia and Grenada, and about 100 miles west of Barbados. St. Vincent and the Grenadines are accessible by air from North America, Europe, and the Caribbean through connections in Barbados, Grenada, Martinique, St. Lucia, and Puerto Rico. Airports are located on St. Vincent, Beckway, Mustique, Hanawan, and Union Island. Other islands in this group include Young Island, Tobago Keys, Palm Island, Myro, and Petit St. Vincent. The first people to live on these islands were a nomadic people called the Siboney, and then the Arawaks and Caribs. By the 16 and 1700s, the French and British laid claim to the island. In the 1630s, African slaves escaped from a Dutch slave ship and settled on St. Vincent. Descendants of the Africans and native Caribs became known as the Garifuna. Today, 90% of the residents here are of African descent, and only a few Carib descendants remain. In 1979, St. Vincent gained independence within Britain's Commonwealth. St. Vincent and the Grenadines are accessible by rental car, an organized bus tour, taxi cab, or water taxi, and of course on foot. To get from one island to another, travelers take ferries, speedboats, tour boats, or airplane, either scheduled or chartered. Exploration of St. Vincent begins at the Botanical Gardens on the outskirts of Kingstown. Established in 1765, these are the oldest botanical gardens in the Western Hemisphere. The gardens are known for the conservation of rare species of plants and birds, including the endangered St. Vincent parrot. William Bly, captain of the bounty, brought the breadfruit plant from the South Pacific. Kingstown, the capital of St. Vincent, is marked by charming cobblestone streets, Georgian architecture, and lively shopping. Colorful tropical fruits and a variety of fresh seafood fill the bustling Kingstown market. Local artisans display paintings and handmade crafts. St. George's Anglican Cathedral, built in the early 1800s, has magnificent stained glass windows. This window was commissioned by Queen Victoria and brought to Kingstown as a gift to the bishop. St. Mary's Cathedral, built in the same era, displays several styles of architecture, including Moorish, Romanesque, and Georgian. On top of Berkshire Hill, Fort Charlotte overlooks the Grenadines. These barracks once housed hundreds of British troops. Today, they are home to a museum and an intriguing collection of paintings depicting the island's original dwellers, the Garifuna Nation. Outside Kingstown, St. Vincent offers a veritable Garden of Eden in the Mesopotamia Valley. Surrounded by mountains, this fertile valley teems with tropical crops, coconut, nutmeg, banana, and cocoa. Refreshing streams flow from the mountains into the valley and on through the Yambu Gorge on the way to the sea. Nature trails abound in St. Vincent. 
lush exotic flowers and trees display their vibrant colors across the landscape. What you have in St. Vincent is an unspoiled environment. A lot of medical and plant species that are quite unique are here located in St. Vincent. The Vermont Trail is a bird lover's heaven. This trail winds through a tropical forest that is home to many tropical birds, including the rare St. Vincent parrot that lives only on St. Vincent. The northern part of St. Vincent is dominated by La Soufrière, a 4,000-foot-high active volcano that last erupted in 1979. Hikers usually take a trail on the east side of the island. This trail cuts through the lush forest to the top of the volcano crater, then down the steep west side to the ocean. Really an awesome experience with the wind blowing, the clouds were just passing right over, right over our heads. Felt really close to heaven. It was a very nice uh, spiritual experience. Some of St. Vincent's most beautiful treasures are well off the beaten path. At the Falls of Berlin, accessible only by boat, waters tumble 60 feet into a natural rock-lined pool carved by the falls. Few can resist a swim. Rivaling the Falls of Berlin are the Trinity Falls. These falls rush through a dramatic canyon along the leeward coast and are accessible by a trail cutting through a dense rainforest. St. Vincent and the Grenadines have some of the world's most unspoiled seaside beaches. Moviegoers may recognize this beach. It's called Wally Labu and was the main filming location for the hit movie Pirates of the Caribbean. Pirates 2 and 3 will be filmed here soon. More beauty awaits offshore, where visitors can sail on the blue, blue water and dive among some of the most diverse and beautiful marine life. The waters here offer excellent dive locations for experts and beginners. Closer to shore, snorkelers must use flashlights to investigate what's known as the Bat Cave. Scattered near the coast of St. Vincent are the sister islands, the Grenadines, named by Travel and Leisure magazine as the world's best Caribbean island destination. These islands are home to some of the best beaches in the Caribbean. Visitors to St. Vincent and the Grenadines find some of the best sailing waters for yacht charters, either bare boat or crude. The islands were named Best Sailing and Yachting Island of the Year by the Caribbean World Travel Awards in 2004. For beach and sailing enthusiasts, this is heaven on earth. Here is a glimpse of just eight of the sublime islands known as the Grenadines that make up the multi-island nation of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Beckway, the largest island in the Grenadines has been historically known as a seafaring community. Beckway's Admiralty Bay is a favorite place to drop anchor for yachtsmen from around the world. Overlooking Admiralty Bay is charming Port Elizabeth, where intimate cafes, colorful bars, quaint shops, and gingerbread houses line the waterfront. Model boat builders skillfully preserve Beckway's age-old ties to the sea. On the northeastern side of this island, the Old Hag Turtle Sanctuary is a safe place for endangered hawkbill turtles. Moon Hole on Beckway's western peninsula is home to unusual stone lodgings built into the hillside. Seven miles southeast of Beckway is Mustique. Once the home to sugar plantations, Mustique is now an idyllic playground for the world's rich and famous, including Brad Pitt, Tommy Hilfiger, Glenn Close and Mick Jagger. Visitors stay in luxurious homes and villas, shop for designer clothes in harborfront boutiques, and picnic on pure white sand beaches. Mystique's rolling hills and fertile valleys are covered with groves of coconut palms. Further to the southeast lies the beautiful island of Kanawan. The tree-covered 900-foot Mount Royal is the focal point here. Mount Royal looks down on an island surrounded by sugar-white beaches. Offshore, an impressive coral reef stretches along the entire east side of the island and forms a paradise for snorkelers. 
Panawan is home to exclusive resorts featuring private landscaped gardens, luxury villas, and a challenging 18-hole Jim Fazio golf course. Miro is the tiniest of the inhabited islands in the Grenadines. Only one and a half square miles. The only way to get here is by boat. Miro has only one road and one village that doesn't even have a name. Despite its size, beautiful white sand beaches abound for lounging, swimming, and snorkeling. And then there's Salt Whistle Bay, considered by yachtsmen to be one of the most stunning bays in the Southern Caribbean. The neighboring Tobago Keys are five deserted islets surrounded by some of the most wondrous coral reefs in the world, most notably the famed Horseshoe Reef, a protected marine national park. The clear blue waters around these reefs present divers and snorkelers with a breathtaking, colorful array of sea life. The islets themselves, accessible only by boat, are marked with coconut trees and a variety of beaches. Union Island is mountainous and home to 1,000-foot Mount Tabois, the highest point in the Grenadines. Clifton, the main town, is a center of activity with hotels, shops, and banks. Nearby Fort Hill, built by the French in the 1600s, offers a spectacular view of the Grenadines and the surrounding countryside. Union Island boasts a number of hiking trails, as well as beaches, bays, and salt ponds. Like some of the other islands in the Grenadines, Union Island is a favorite of yachtsmen, offering some of the finest sailing in the Western Hemisphere. Just an eight-minute boat ride from Union Island is Palm Island, named for the hundreds of palm trees here. It's a private island resort that offers romantic beachfront cottages and spectacular white sand beaches. A 30-minute boat ride from Union Island, Petit St. Vincent, the southernmost of the Grenadine Islands, is another secluded island resort. St. Vincent and the Grenadines offer the perfect setting for the quintessential romantic wedding and seductive honeymoon hideaways. Throughout St. Vincent and the Grenadines, visitors find a wide range of accommodations, from affordable to ultra-exclusive. Many accommodations, whether luxury or modest, offer seclusion and almost all provide superb views of spectacular tropical scenery. The most exclusive retreats are in the Grenadines, where vacationers seek to get away from it all. Many celebrities and movie stars have vacationed in the Grenadines. Restaurants throughout St. Vincent and the Grenadines offer Caribbean cuisine at its best. Visitors indulge in regional fare such as Callaloo soup, made from dasheen leaves, a vegetable similar to spinach, curried goat, delectable dishes made with breadfruit, one of the tropical fruits brought here centuries ago by Captain Bly. Scrumptious desserts made with the creamy and unusual soursop fruit and perfectly prepared fresh seafood. A trip to Young Island off St. Vincent promises the most romantic of romantic dinners. Night spots throughout these islands offer plenty of opportunities for music, dancing, and tropical libations. The unmistakable sound of soca is the dominant music here. Festivals feature music ranging from the blues to gospel. Vinci Moss in July brings the revelry, flamboyance, and magic of carnival. Without question, the most colorful celebration of the year, and all to the intoxicating beat of calypso and soca. Carnival culminates with the wild and colorful Mardi Gras parade where thousands of partygoers fill the streets. Like emerald jewels scattered across the blue Caribbean, the islands of St. Vincent and the Grenadines remain relatively undisturbed by modern development. It's this indescribable beauty that lures visitors back time and again. Come discover the lush landscapes, the captivating culture, and the friendly faces of this island nation. Paradise awaits you in St. Vincent and the Grenadines.